early measures rolled out for year-end floods. Three main thrusts outline under National Biotechnology Policy 2.0. Prime Minister Datuk Seri Ismail Sabri Yaakob today directed District Disaster Management Committee's JPBD to be immediately activated to coordinate immediate response services at all disaster-prone areas in view of potential floods due to northeast monsoon. The Premier who chaired the Central Disaster Management Committee meeting today said the decision to activate JPBD was agreed during the meeting. The monsoon season normally brings about heavy rain that causes severe floods in coastal states, especially states in the East Coast. According to Malaysian Meteorological Department, Met Malaysia, the monsoon season normally starts from September to November. Met Malaysia, however, expects the 2022-2023 monsoon season to start in November 2022 and carry on till March 2023. According to Met's forecast, heavy rain is expected in Kelantan, Terengganu and Pahang from November to December 2022, while Johor, Sabah and Sarawak are expected to face the monsoon from December 2022 to January 2023. In terms of managing flood victims, Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri said the Social Welfare Department has been directed to activate 6,000 and 10 temporary relief centres PPS with a capacity of housing 1,620,855 victims throughout the country. Dr. Sri Ismail Sabri also said the government had allocated 2.59 million ringgit to upgrade facilities at all PPS, especially toilets and shower rooms. On another note, Dr. Sri Ismail Sabri said the National Biotechnology Policy 2.0 DBN 2.0 launched today will focus on three main thrusts towards empowering the sector in line with Malaysia's aspiration to be a high-technology country by 2030. He said the three main thrusts were agricultural biotechnology and food security, healthcare and well-being, and biotechnology in industrialization and circular economy. The Premier said that as such, DBN 2.0 would strengthen the existing biotechnology ecosystem and be the catalyst in resolving national challenges regarding food security and management of pandemics and climate change crises through local biotechnology solutions. Dato Sri Ismail Sabri said the DBN 2.0 would drive the momentum outlined under the National Science, Technology and Innovation Policy 2021-2030 to transform Malaysia from a technology user country to a technological development country by setting five main targets. Lima sasaran utama DBN 2.0 adalah Pertama, 30% syarikat Bionexus ke peringkat global dan 70% syarikat Bionexus peringkat tempatan kekal aktif. Kedua, sokongan kepada syarikat-syarikat Bionexus yang berpotensi untuk menjadi syarikat berstatus unicorn. Kerajaan dalam konteks ini mensasarkan tiga syarikat bioinovasi berstatus unicorn menjelang 2030. Ketiga, pemerkasaan institut dan institusi serta tokoh penyelidik bioteknologi tempatan bertaraf dunia. Keempat, 5% KDNK negara oleh syarikat-syarikat bioteknologi. Dan kelima, 80% graduan bioteknologi yang diiktiraf melalui program pentauliahan mikro dan 20% graduan bioteknologi dalam program program pasca siswaza. Meanwhile, the government will discuss the proposal to offer a moratorium to small and medium enterprises (SMEs), especially those still struggling to recover post-COVID-19. That the Swiss Mai Sabri said the government will discuss the matter with the relevant ministries soon.
Saya tak boleh jawab macam tu saja. Ya, kita akan bincang. Ya, kita akan bincang dengan Menteri SMB, Puskop, Menteri Koperasi, Menteri Pembangunan Usahawan. Kita akan bincang dengan Menteri Kewangan. Jadi kita akan bincang dulu. Kita, kita bincang. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. Previously, National Recovery Council Chairman Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin had proposed to the government to consider providing special moratorium for SME's sector. He said the sector which had yet to fully recover from the impact of COVID-19 is now facing the recent hike of overnight policy rate, increasing its players' loan repayment rate and stretching the sector's recovery timeline even further. The Keluarga Malaysia Cheap Sale Program PJMKM has been implemented in 454 state constituencies done, which is 71% of the 639 done targeted. Chairman of the Special Task Force on Jihad Against Inflation, Tan Sri Anwar Musa, after chairing a meeting of the task force today, said implementations of the PJMKM is being intensified in view of it receiving encouraging response from Keluarga Malaysia. Usaha teru perlu dilipat gandakan, terutama sekali di beberapa negeri yang agak perlahan perlaksanaannya. Ini termasuklah di Pulau Pinang, di negeri sembilan dan beberapa kawasan tertentu di negeri Sarawak. The PJMKM, which started in mid-August, is a program that gives people access to get cheaper goods every week. Tan Sri Anwar said information about PJMKM will be increased on local news channels to enable the public to know about the program more comprehensively. He said each premises undertaking the PJMKM needs to display the levels of essential items listed in the program clearly. The chairman also announced that the cheap sale program at public higher education institutions, IPTA, or PJMKM at campus, will be launched on 10th October at University Kebangsaan Malaysia. He said as soon as the universities reopen on 10th October for the new semester, the Ministry of Entrepreneur Development and Cooperatives will launch PJMKM at campus. Simultaneous sales will be held at 20 other campuses with existing cooperatives at the universities that have been identified to implement the programme. On another note, Tan Sri Anwar said the Special Task Force on Jihad Against Inflation will review the aspects of food supply chain approach and distribution and find alternative sources of imported food to reduce price and cost hikes in a bid to curb inflation in the country. The chairman said it was among the recommendations given by research company Ipsos and Remberhat to the task force for consideration today. Commenting further on the matter, Tan Sri Anwar said Ipsos also presented its findings on inflation and its effects on the world, including Malaysia, and made several recommendations in the areas of food security and spending patterns that can contribute directly to the national economic recovery. Uh, antara yang dicadangkan untuk kita melihat uh, semula uh, kepada kaedah uh, rantaian bekalan makanan dan pengedarannya untuk mempunyai pusat-pusat one stop yang lebih efisien, yang lebih integrated, yang lebih orang kata mengurangkan apa tu kemungkinan-kemungkinan kenaikan harga yang tidak diperlukan juga pengesuran supaya kita melihat kepada sumber-sumber negara sumber-sumber negara alternatif bagi barangan-barangan yang kita import. Sebagai contoh, kalau kita banyak mengimport katakanlah ayam daripada sumber tertentu, daripada negara tertentu, kita harus mula melihat kepada negara-negara yang lain juga sebagai alternatif untuk mengurangkan kos. A total of 26 selected agricultural commodities recorded self-sufficiency ratio SSR of over 100% in 2021, according to the Department of, Malaysia, of Statistics Malaysia, DOSM. Based on the DOSM statistics released today, the department said 10 out of 14 selected fruits recorded SSR of more than 100%, with papaya remained the highest at 146.9%, followed by watermelon 139.5% and chimpanda 110.8%. Meanwhile, the country's ability to produce local mangoes to meet domestic needs remains the lowest at 16.2%, down from 20.2% in 2020. 
For selected vegetables, Dosum said 7 out of 10 food commodities recorded over 100% SSR, with tomatoes recording the highest SSR at 118.9%, while chilli remained at the lowest at 29.3%. Two other selected crops, namely sugarcane and cassava, recorded SSR of 149.4% and 100.2% respectively. As for selected livestock, duck meat recorded an SSR of 130.6% and chicken or duck eggs recorded 114.4%. The statistics also showed that 5 out of 13 selected fish species recorded an SSR of over 100%, namely freshwater catfish at 108.3%, crab 104.4%, mackerel 100.7%, shrimp 100.4% and patin or silver catfish 100%. China, Singapore and South Korea were the top three countries that have poured investments into Joho in the first half of the year. Joho Investment Trade and Consumer Affairs Committee Chairman Lee Ting Han said out of the total 60.9 billion ringgit ranked in by the state, which was the highest investment value in the country from January to June, investors from China contributed some 60% or 40 billion ringgit. Elaborating further on the matter, Lee said the investments mostly went into setting up data centers as a lot of cost goes into the land acquisition and sophisticated facilities for such services. He noted that so far, the global political situation has not impacted the state in terms of receiving investments from China and Taiwan and Johor remains in the position of welcoming investments that will benefit the people and the country. He added that Singapore and South Korea came in second and third place respectively as top investors for the state. When asked about the state government's forecast for the investment value for the rest of the year, Lee said no target has been set yet, but he was optimistic that it will be a good year for Johor. This is because the state is currently in active talks with investors from countries such as the United States and United Kingdom in various sectors like petrochemical and manufacturing. Sisters' rate for Malaysian family housing program increased. The cabinet has approved the Rural Development Ministry's KPLB proposal to increase the assistance rates for the construction of the Malaysian Family Housing Program PRKM. According to its minister, Ratu Sri Madzi Khalid, the increase will help contractors to deal with the issue of the increase in the cost of building materials, which is the reason for their failure to complete projects due to the no profit margin for the work done. Membina rumah baru. Uh, di Semenanjung dulu seunit harganya 56000 seunit rumah tapi dengan kelulusan kabinet uh, seunit rumah menjadi 66000 uh, bagi bina baru di negeri Sabah dan Sarawak dan juga di wilayah persekutuan Labuan harga lama 60 8000 Kabinet telah meluluskan pada 26 Ogos harga baru 79000 seunit He also announced that for repair works the assistance has been increased from 13000 ringgit to a maximum rate of 15000 ringgit in the peninsula while for Sabah Sarawak and Labuan it is increased to a maximum rate of 17000 from 15000 ringgit previously he added the assistance rate increase would enable about 13,000 units of PRKM houses to be built throughout the country and will benefit more than 70,000 households in rural areas. The former ministry will be conducting advocacy campaigns to raise public awareness regarding overseas job scam syndicates. Its Minister Datuk Sri Saifuddin Abdullah said, aside from educating the public, the campaigns also aim to restore the trust of Malaysians to obtain employment opportunities abroad through trusted and reliable channels. Nasihat kita seperti dulu juga iaitu jangan mudah terpedaya kerana 
cara mereka ni licik satu dia tawarkan kerja tu yang glamour kedua gaji besar ketiga ada macam-macam keistimewaan dan kemudahan dapat kereta dapat rumah boleh bercuti di luar negara kemudian ada setengahnya itu yang lebih dahsyat lagi dia ajak holiday ya dia ajak holiday lepas tu terperangkap dan dipaksa bekerja He added as of 9 September, 118 job scam victims in Cambodia managed to be rescued out of 148 cases reported. Pertamanya, kita menggalakkan on another matter, the Wisma Putra has submitted a name list containing 24 approved candidates to fill the positions of heads of missions overseas, including to Indonesia to the Public Services Commission's SPA for the final screening process. Nato Sri Saifuddin said the candidates who will be filling the High Commissioner and Ambassador positions were selected among diplomatic officers serving the government non-politicians. Jadi saya jawab 24 negara yang namanya sudah diangkat dan sekarang berada di SPA dan 24 negara ini semuanya adalah pegawai diplomatik. Termasuk Indonesia. The minister was commenting about the latest development on the position of Malaysian envoy to Indonesia which is still vacant. It was previously reported that Pasir Salak Member of Parliament, Datuk Seri Tajuddin Abdul Rahman, has been appointed to the position. However, his name was not listed to receive the letter of appointment as the heads of Malaysian missions in a ceremony held in Istana Negara in July. The Education Ministry will examine the guidelines for selection of motivational speakers to ensure a safer environment in schools. Its Senior Minister Dr. Dr. Razijidin said this was to avoid any untoward incidents against the students. macam-macam uh, pendekatan digunakan oleh sekolah ini untuk program motivasi. So we realize this this, this staff dan kita sekarang tengah uh, perincikan proses-proses uh, garis panduan berkaitan dengan uh, pemilihan mereka uh, berkaitan ke sekolah motivasi dan sebagainya. As I said, uh, before this kalau kita perincikan semua benda kadang kata semua kementerian nak kontrol. You see, kenapa tak bagi autonomi pada sekolah? Uh, this is the challenge that we are facing. Namun bila tidak ada satu penyelarasan dan pemantauan yang menyeluruh, bila timbul isu dan kita uh, kena perincikan satu persatu balik. So that's what we are doing right now. As I said, we are looking at the loophole into the system. The senior minister was commenting on the recent arrest of a motivational speaker for alleged sexual abuse of four teens. Selangor Police Chief Commissioner Dato' Arjunaidi Muhammad in a statement recently said that the police had received four reports on the alleged abuse on 30th August. He also said that the reports were lodged in Klang, Shah Alam and Kajang. All reports were lodged by four individuals aged 17 and 18 who claimed they were victims of sexual abuse with the perpetrators being known motivational speaker. The suspect had been reminded until 14 September and investigations were being conducted under the Sexual Offence Against Children Act 2017. The trial of former Prime Minister Zatut Sri Najib Toraza for the misappropriation of 2.28 billion ringgit of one Malaysia Development Berhad 1 MDB ended early today to allow the accused to see a doctor. Lead prosecutor Datuk Sri Gopasiram told the Kuala Lumpur High Court that the trial will not be able to proceed in the afternoon. According to Datuk Sri Najib's special officer, Mohamed Mukhlis Maghribi, Datuk Sri Najib had requested to be held for observation at Kuala Lumpur Hospital, but the request was denied. He added that the doctor discharged Datuk Sri Najib, changed his medication from the usual prescription that he had been taking for years, and sent him back to Kajang Prison. This morning, a test by medical assistant showed that the accused blood pressure was dangerously high due to the change in medication. Datuk Sri Gopal suggested to the court to adjourn the trial at 12 30 p.m. to give enough time for Datuk Suri Najib to be taken back to prison and for him to see the doctor by 2 p.m. High Court Judge Datuk Colin Lawrence Sequera allowed the court proceedings to end at about 12.35 p.m. The 1MDB trial is scheduled to resume tomorrow with M-Bank's Jalan Rajachulan branch manager Ar Umar Devi is expected to continue testifying as the 37th prosecution witness. Datuk Suri Najib is serving a 12-year jail term at Kajang Prison after he was found guilty of mis 
is appropriating 42 million ringgit in SRC International Sinayam Berhad Funds. Coming up in our foreign segment, Typhoon Muifa hits Japan's Okinawa. Typhoon Weifa has brought heavy downpours and gale force winds to islands in the southwest of Japan's Okinawa. According to the Japan's meteorological agency, JMA, as of 11 a.m. local time, Typhoon Weifa was over waters 30 kilometers south of Ishigaki Island with an atmospheric pressure of 955 hectopascals at its center and maximum wind speeds of up to 216 kilometers per hour. The powerful typhoon has caused a disruption to transportation services in the region with Japan's top two carriers, Japan Airlines and all Nippon Airways, cancelling flights to and from the popular tourist destinations of Miyako and Ishigaki Islands. The slow-moving typhoon, the 12th of the season, is expected to continue to bring severe weather conditions to the Sakishima Islands through Wednesday as it moves northward. The weather emergency said the atmospheric pressure is extremely unstable as a result of a typhoon and while wind speeds may decrease to 72 to 108 kilometers per hour on Wednesday, Okinawa could see as much as 300 millimeters of rainfall in the 24-hour period through noon on Tuesday. In the 24-hour period, though noon on Wednesday, meanwhile, 50 to 100 millimeters of rain is expected. King Charles III today made his first speech to Parliament as King since ascending to the throne following Queen Elizabeth II's death, hailing the vital traditions of British lawmakers. The country's new monarch gave his inaugural parliamentary address in front of members of the elected Lower House of Commons and the Upper Chamber House of Lords packed into Westminster Hall. As I stand before you today, I cannot help but feel the weight of history which surrounds us and which reminds us of the vital parliamentary traditions to which members of both houses dedicate yourselves with such personal commitment for the betterment of us all. King Charles also used his address to pay tribute to his mother and to pledge to uphold the principle of constitutional government. He is scheduled to join a procession in Scotland to accompany the Queen's coffin along Edinburgh's Royal Mile to St Giles Cathedral before a religious service and vigil later on Monday. The Queen died at home on 8 September, triggering a period of national mourning when tens of thousands of Britons are expected to pay tribute to her. Ukraine forces said their lightning counter-offensive took back more ground in the past 24 hours as Russia replied with a strike on some of the recaptured ground. The territorial shifts were one of Russia's biggest reversals since its forces were turned back from Kiev in the earliest days of the nearly seven months of fighting, yet Moscow signaled it was no closer to agreeing a negotiated peace. Moscow announced air, rocket and artillery attacks on reclaimed areas in the Kharkiv region today, a day after Kiev said Russian strikes on electricity infrastructure caused power failures. The retaliatory fire came, as Ukraine said, forces had recaptured more than 20 additional settlements, claiming Russian troops are hastily abandoning their position and fleeing. Kiev had already announced the recapture of the strategic city of Izium in the country's east, one of the series of victories claimed against Russia's army. Ukraine said its forces recaptured 500 square kilometers in the southern Kherson region, which were in addition to the huge gains in the east over the weekend. Moscow considered having lost territory, which experts saw as a serious blow to its war ambitions, but Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov saw no prospects for negotiations. Coming up in sports, Alcaraz...
The Harimau Malaya will face a tough task against the host in Thailand's King's Cup tournament at Chiang Mai Stadium on 22nd September. The draw for the four-nation tournament today saw Malaysia drawn against Thailand in the semi-final straightaway. The other semi-final match will see Trinidad and Tobago face Tajikistan on the same day. If Kim Pangon's squad, who are currently ranked 148th in the world, succeed in defeating Thailand, who are now ranked 111th, they will play in the final either against Trinidad and Tobago team or Tajikistan. Malaysia have won the cup four times in 1972, 1976, 1977 and 1978. Pangon previously said the four-team international tournament organised by the Football Association of Thailand would be a useful tournament for the team before the 2022 AFF Mitsubishi Electric Cup in December as they prepare for the Asian Cup next year. Union Berlin moved to the top of the Bundesliga standings for the first time in the German club's history after they came away from Kond with a 1-0 win yesterday thanks to an own goal early in the game. Five wins and one draw in six meetings. In a whirlwind opening to the match, Union were fortunate to take the lead in the third minute when Khan defender Timo Juba's attempted block on a low cross was deflected past high goalkeepers at a near post. Khan were unlucky to concede a penalty five minutes later when a header came off the back of Luca Kilian's elbow but not saw his chipped effort come off the crossbar. Kilian's day got worse when he was sent off for a second year and too clear of champions Bayern Munich who slipped to third. They got even worse on 81 minutes. A second yellow card for the defender. Spanish teenager Carlos Alcaraz claimed his first Grand Slam title and took the world number one ranking with a 6 4 2 6 7 6 6 3 win over Norris Casper Ruud in the US Open final yesterday. Alcaraz 19 fell to his back and cupped his hands to his face before jumping up to embrace Ruud at the net and then climbed past photographers and into the stands to celebrate in his box with his team. Daniel Medvedev at the top of the rankings. He is the youngest world number one since the ATP rankings began in 1973, breaking the mark set by Leighton Hewitt, who was 20 when he became number one in 2001. Rude was trying to become the first Norwegian to capture the top spot, but was unable to match Alcaraz's firepower under the close roof at Arthur Ashe Stadium. French Open finalist Rude will... Alright, so that concludes this evening's news at 10 in our top story. Early measures rolled out for year-end floods. Join us again at 12.30 tomorrow afternoon. Till then, I'm Shuhaida Arifin, Salam Kaga Malaysia.